Hey! <laughs> I'm not gonna say hey. Hi buddy, so this is my first ever vlog. I've always really wanted to do it um, and it's taken a few months for me to actually um, overcome the awkwardness I think of speaking to a camera and thinking that there's people watching me. Um, I actually used to do it quite a lot and I will go into that and that's kind of why I wanted to do it now. Um, I actually asked for my camera which is filming me now um, last Christmas so that's um, about 10 months ago, it's now October 2018, so I asked for it um, and I do this thing called an end of year video, so I'll film my family, I'll film if we go on holiday um, and then I'll compact it with like music so I can't upload that because of copyright reasons, but it would just be for my family. Um, but I really liked the idea of sharing some of my moments with um, other people. Um, hence the fact that I want to do this. I've always liked media. Um, in school I left sixth form and worked straight on a show called The X Factor. It was a crazy time ever. Um, I interviewed Dermot O'Leary, Little Mix. Here's my favourite, and I have actually just seen it. Here's my favourite clip um, of my first meeting with Dermot. I then interviewed him another four times. But this is how nice he was. It's before we went live to when we went live. Um, and I found it and it's 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 so good. Um, and he's such a decent guy. Um, and this is it. He made me feel really welcome. He says, how do you feel? He goes, I feel and she never says to him, I feel scared. It takes a lot, <laughs> takes a lot to make me scared and it's a wonderful sensation. And it's so true. The 30 seconds when is, the theme tune goes it. is almost more exciting than the show itself. This is good. This is good. Oh, Seriously. That's why we've put the theme tune in. It's brilliant. It's Honestly. Good. Don't worry. We're just oh, having a God. chat. That's what's it's happening. It's a general chat. Just having a chat and people are ignoring us. Three, two. Bow, 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 bow. What do you think of the new theme tune? You like it? Of course it will. Hello, I'm James Farrett. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, Get James the Farrett. nerves down. He said James my name. Down. Do you know what? That's brilliant. <laughs> he said it for you. I'm James Farrow, and I'm a super fan today. Backstage at the X Factor, it's amazing. And I'm here with the one and only Dermot O'Leary, everybody! <laughs> James Farrett, do you like the new kind of revamp theme tune? I love it. We just I, played you know, it. It's I brilliant. Didn't, I, I, I hadn't heard it properly. Until and, now? No, until the first time we went live. <laughs> Did you like and it? So the, yeah, but the first time they played it out and we were going live and I was thinking, it's just What's it's the right show. And so am, I, <laughs> am I doing it right here in the right place? Yeah. Bit so of a second for you. Mm. I was dead excited. And me being me, 18 years old, a drama student, I was like, this is it. This is my moment. I'm Mariah Carey. Um, Beyonce who. I honestly thought that this is me and I've just found these are really funny. I ended up doing it for, I went back about four times, four or five times. It was just during the live show so we'd go down to Fountain Studios in Wembley um, and I loved it and literally I woke up one morning, smile on my face and then this, I don't know if it's going to be a shot, Furnace Teens X Factor Coupe. Now this was the first one, and I was so um, so ecstatic. I went round everywhere in Dalton that had one of these outside, and and I, I went in and I was like, um, hi, could I have that outside? And I wanted them to ask why. Why would you want that? And I was like, oh, it's about me. Um, and I loved it. And then this is so I've got that one. That one, same one, but a different store. And then, this is pretty much the same one, but they changed Fairness to Dalton, so this is probably the one from Dalton and the others were from the like, surrounding area. Um, and I just loved it, it was the best time, and which is why I, I think I'm, I'm getting excited about this, because um, I, like, I like to talk and I like to share things. Um, but also, so 
this doesn't look open. I then got tickets to the final in Wembley. Um, it came in a red envelope, it actually doesn't even look opened, which is scary because I did go. Um, and it was a ticket to the X Factor final. Um, 10th December 2011, so it was 2011 when I went. Um, I really do hope that that has focused, and now I'm focused, but I'll never know. Um, and I, yeah, I, I remember sat in the, if you've ever been to a, a TV show that's been filmed live, and you know like 10 million people are watching it, and you're sat there, it's the most surreal experience. I remember just crying, thinking, this is crazy, like, James Farrow from Dalton is sat here and I was talking to them that I was a part of this show. But I also worked on Britain's Got Talent, so I collected the cue cards. And I was literally like a fanboy. Maybe that's why I don't wear them anymore, I was too excited about everything. So that, nothing on the back of the More Talent one. However, I've got the Britain's Got Talent one. Um, and these are, I think, if something goes wrong or something. But um, on the back, it has the rehearsal. I don't know if you've seen that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but it basically says, um, Sam Kelly, Lovable Rogues, um, The Mend, Only Boys Allowed. Um, so it was it was that year, it was 2011. Um, and this was Saturday the 12th of May for Britain's Got Talent. So actually, no, it was 2012. Um, yeah, but here's, here's a picture of when I had to sit in as David Williams um, as a judge in the rehearsals of the final. It, it's a strange one because I really enjoyed it, but the people that worked on it, um, you, you also have to fit into an environment. I, I suddenly realised I, I didn't necessarily fit in to the environment that, that was around me and um, it, I felt quite uncomfortable in some ways. I loved it, um, but I, I, some ways I did feel uncomfortable. Like the people, um, some people, not everybody, but the higher people were quite rude to me um, and rude to everybody. Like there was a definite hierarchy, and if you were below that, then you would know about it. Um, and that, that kind of like ruined it for me because I loved the show, I loved the X Factor, but then working on it, um, I don't watch it anymore because I, I know and it's kind of ruined it for me. Um, I still know people, I don't really speak to a lot of people who work on it anymore, um, but there were a, a small amount of people that were great and they made a massive impact on my life. But um, yeah, I don't work on that anymore and I followed a career. I now um, live in the Lake District um, I fell in love and I'm with my boyfriend Leon and I was just um, a store manager at Pandora um, but I have just quit there to follow a different career. Um, still in management but um, so with all of this going on you kind of forget the fun parts of things as well and things that you love to do um, and that's exactly why I am wanting to vlog as well. I think it's really important to, um, although you, you've got a career to follow and if it doesn't necessarily follow the, your plan that's okay, you don't have to have a plan, um, just, just carry on and just keep doing things that you love and that's what this is. Um, so it's going to be based on my life. Um, whether that's entertaining enough and also travel. Travel is a big, big part of why I want to do this. Um, when I was back in sixth form and I started to become a little bit more independent, um, I remember getting in my friend's car. First time I'd been driven by a friend and she drove to Manchester. And we were going down this hill I'd never had a problem with ever. Um, and I had I had a panic attack and I didn't know what it was and I thought I was actually going to die, it was horrible. Um, but we laughed it off, but all the way to Manchester I was quite nervous. And I, I was just overthinking everything. And then uh, when you get to Manchester and you're heading towards the Trafford Centre, there's a bridge, um, the Trafford Centre Bridge. Again, always looked forward to going over it, um, but there was something this time 
that unsettled me. So then when we were going over, I had another panic attack and this is two in the, the day, it's supposed to be a day and it was the first time I'd ever had it. Um, and ever since then, um, I have, I can't go on like tubes in London. I can go on certain ones, which I'll, I'll share. And this is another reason why um, I, w I want to vlog because I want to show that you're not alone and hopefully I'm not alone in this and that there's certain things that do cause these situations but you can also get over them. I didn't fly for eight years because I had a panic attack on a flight um, but then I was like no I really need to do this and I had a really supportive family and um, my auntie booked me onto British Airways for a flying course um, and I went on it, I was very apprehensive. I think I went thinking, right, someone's going to hypnotize me. I'm gonna come out of there a different person. You then go on a flight straight after about three o'clock and I'd skip onto this plane with a massive smile and just sit there and think I'm, I'm cured. Um, and obviously that didn't happen. I actually sat through the whole thing thinking, I'm not changing, like nothing's changed, I'm still scared of flying, I'm not going on this plane. But I didn't want to let anyone down, so we were walking through the airport to this plane and I just took my chance and ran out of Heathrow crying. Um, I was really disappointed with myself. Um, my auntie promised me steak if I got on the plane, didn't get steak, I'm really disappointed. So I was like, really need to just rebook this. So not only that, I then came back and spoke to my boyfriend and he was like, right, we're gonna book Florida. Um, we're gonna book it and you're gonna get on that plane. So we booked it and I didn't tell him this, but when we booked it, I wasn't sure at that moment whether I was gonna get on the plane. Um, it was actually, we booked it, I think April 2015 and we were going in May 2016. So I had a year and I was like, okay, this is fine. Um, so then we also booked Rome for September that same year in 2015. So then I had to go on this fear flying course, I had to go on this plane. So I went on the course in June that year um, and I spoke to the air hostesses, they were brilliant. I didn't really let myself um, speak a lot last time I went, the first time. Um, and I got really involved this time and instead of thinking that something was going to happen for me, I suddenly realised that I was the one that had to um, had to change and something I had to change for something to happen and that's a lot um, of where it leads to what, what happens in my life. Um, so I got on the plane, didn't like it but I got on the plane. Then we went to Rome and it was fine. Um, I still hate takeoff, it's not the best. Um, and then I went to Florida and now two years later I've been to Florida again and we're going again, um, it's now October so we're again next September. So that's three times and I love it. Um, so it's all about uh, overcoming things that, I mean my hands will sweat, I will get tingling feelings, I will just feel like I'm about to die, um, I cannot do this. Um, but that's normal, I guess, um, and I, I feel so much better for it. I mean, when we get to Florida, obviously with Disney there's loads of rides, and I honestly hate everything about rides that drop. Teacups, yes, um, it's a small world, it's annoying, but I know that I'm not gonna die. Um, so I can, but then it starts to get irritating because you know that you're just being comfortable and are you really living? Um, so my boyfriend doesn't push me, Leon, I have to say Leon. Um, Leon doesn't push me, but he just puts things in my mind and it, he makes it my decision, which is great. So the first time we went, we went on a ride called um, the Dwarf Mine Train, which kids go on. Um, but obviously there's me. I close my eyes on every drop like this. It's about a 30 foot drop, 
30 foot or 30 meters, it's one of them. Um, and I'll hold the railing, I'll hold the side of the carriage, um, and this is a clip of it. out and um, going round because I got myself so worked up. Again I would close my eyes and just imagine that I'm not even there but then afterwards I feel great but that's as much as I pushed it and then when we just went back I went on. Oh, it took me about a day like as soon as I land in Florida I'm dead happy but then I will be concerned about the next thing. So I knew I promised Leon that I would go on Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain you might as well push me off the side of the shard like, you look at it and everyone seems normal. There's like a, a three month old baby like with his arms up in front enjoying it. And there's me, 25 years old, just, it makes you feel really stupid in fact. So um, Splash Mountain, we were like, let's do it the first day. So he booked a fast pass for that night at seven o'clock and we walked past Splash Mountain and there wasn't a queue and we were like, well, let's not wait, let's just go. And the entire time in the queue, I was like, right, okay, can't back out of this. He was like, let's go, it's fine, we'll come on it another time. But I just know if I didn't face that head on, I wouldn't have done it. So we got on it, and I go really silly. I will literally, I think I'll promise him my life savings. I'll be like, when we get off this, I will give you 500 pounds, I'll give you 600 pounds, I'm so sorry. Um, and he's just laughing at me, um, and it's quite embarrassing actually. Um, but I just feel like if I'm, if I'm nice in that moment, then I'll come out of this alive. Um, and I did obviously, it was just a flume. Um, as we were going up, I would be like, this is it, isn't it? This is it, this is it. Tell me it's it, don't you lie to me. Um, and I just get myself really worked up and then there's again that three month old like looking at me like, but that's that's how I am. I can't say it's how I was. I'm still like that with things. And then we went down, and I, it, when we hit the water, I was like, I've done it, um, and it felt great. And I think when I go back, I'm going to do it again. Um, but every time I go on rides, I will type in how big is the drop. I will then go on like Net Mums and see their experiences, and they'll be like, Oh yeah, don't go on this like. Um, but then you've always got to think, well that's their opinion, so you, you've got, you lot, you're different, so you have to do it. Um, and have your own experience. So again, um, there was another one, the Tower of Terror. I had watched YouTube videos about this, I had really, really um, just researched every angle, night vision. Um, I'd watch the making of the Tower of Terror, um, the sequences, because it doesn't just drop once, it drops like that. And I needed to be prepared for that, because I've been on, um, I think this is all stemmed from 2014 when I went to Disney Paris, and I was on Pirates of the Caribbean, I knew there was a drop, and I actually swore, um, and there was a kid in front of me and I felt really embarrassed, so um, I don't do that anymore, I just research everything, but it gets to the point where you almost don't enjoy it as much. Um, 
bit, but I end up doing it and then I can go back and then I can and enjoy it, I think. Um, oh, I almost forgot what I was talking about now. I've waffled on Tower of Terror. So here's a picture of Tower of Terror when I went on it. As you can see, I have got my eyes closed. Um, it was one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, and then there's a, there's a girl um, who literally doesn't look phased at all. Um, no, there's a girl on the back row that does look phased. And then the front row, he could literally be watching come dine with me. And it's just crazy to think that doesn't bother some people, um, but then to me it could just be the worst thing. Um, and that's so frustrating in life to think that what's wrong with me to have this fear when it's so normal for people. Um, and it could be quite annoying and frustrating, but then if you start to like, kind of like chip away at things um, and do things, then it just becomes a lot smaller of an issue. And also don't want it to stop me doing things in life because that would just be even worse, I think. Um, yeah. So, that's probably me waffled on a lot, actually. Um, so next time we go, which is next September, we're actually dragging my family along, my sister and my mum. There's going to be four of us. Um, and I've said that I'm going to tackle Expedition Everest, which again, is, uh, I nearly did it last time, and I was like, no, I've pushed myself too much. Um, so I'm going to do Expedition Everest next time. And again, this is quite a big thing for me, but if someone's watching this and thinking, it's literally like the teacups. Maybe, you know, I think it's obvious that not everything is seen in the same way to different people, and this is a big, big thing. I will feel exactly the same as a transatlantic flight getting on that ride. Um, I'll do it and I'll film it and then it'll be great for you to see. Um, one of the main reasons I wanted to get into vlogging, because we now go on holiday and have conquered that fear, um, we watch, it was Leon that got me into watching YouTube videos. I used to get really annoyed with him just because I was annoyed that I hadn't found it and then he did and I was like, oh, well, I don't want to watch what you found. Um, you know it's true. Um, so uh, we watch these videos and they're so informative. And they actually made me feel so much happier to go to these places because if it wasn't for them, I would have been more anxious because I wouldn't have known what's coming. So I really do think watching these videos and watching like real people go through things um, and the information that it gives out, I just think it's it's great to watch and hopefully you'll find that with me. It's not all like that though, um, it will be, also be my life um, and I haven't quite decided when I'm going to film but I know that um, I obviously like to talk so I'll probably enjoy doing this um, and then yeah, we also have a dog, Spring Spaniel, he's crazy, he, he'll basically probably be walking over the ceiling at this point. He is three, three years old and he'll never calm down, ever. Um, and yeah, that's my life. So, um, there's a lot to look forward to and I'll just film everything. Um, and I can't wait for you to meet my family if they let me film them. Um, my mum will, she loves it. I've got her into vlogging and you'll see her like talking to the camera. Um, she's hilarious. I might even dig out some videos now I've done an introduction um, of those films, the, those clips I said I filmed throughout the year and maybe just upload some just so people know what what my family are and who they are. Um, anyway, I hope this has helped and I really do want to um, keep doing this and hopefully help people um, as well and that's the purpose and um, yeah. Let's overcome some fears.